reefers, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about acclimating your fish. Okay, so you go to the LFS, you pick your fish, you bring them home and you want to plop them in your tank. Oh, you don't really want to just throw them straight into the tank. This poor little guy is uh, pretty stressed, he's just been chased by a net, thrown into a plastic bag, driven however far he may be or if he's been shipped, you know. It's a lot of stress for the poor little guy. And you want to make that transition from the LFS's uh, tank water to your tank water as less stressful as possible. So what we want to do is a drip acclimation. So here what we're doing is we're taking the tank water from the LFS, pouring it into a, a container big enough for the fish to be comfortable in and filling it up so that the fish has a decent amount of swimming area in that little bucket. Maybe it's not going to be there for long. Uh, depending on the on the salinity anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes acclimation is more than enough um you know, obviously if your salinity is much lower then you want to go a little bit longer than that and also if the fish is being shipped versus just driven home then you'd want to do a bit longer um uh, drip acclimation because your ph level would have dropped quite considerably so maybe an hour hour and a bit just to you know make sure that transition is is a lot uh, less um, of a shock to the fish so you want to use the same sort of amount of um, water volume but at a slower rate I'll explain that just now so <clears throat> you, you take a fish home you put them in a comfortable container discard as much as the LFS water as possible where the fish is still comfortable not lying on its side it must still be swimming around nicely you take a dripper a uh, airline with a little valve on it so you're siphoning water from your aquarium into this container and that will slowly acclimate the fish to the 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 parameters of your tank without or not without but reducing the fish's stress when you add them in okay so what we're going to do today is a little bit of a diy we're going to make our own drip acclimation acclimation pipe um so basically everything you need for this um the, the actual tools you should have lying around your house. So what you'd need to get to make yourself a nice DIY acclimation drip is a piece of acrylic tube, which you can get from any acrylic supplier. Well, most of them should stock the acrylic tubing. Um, this one here is five millimeter OD, a one millimeter wall, and a three millimeter RD. That means the outer diameter is five mils and the inner diameter is three mils it's perfect for a drip okay so when you buy it unfortunately they're not going to sell you the little piece you need you're probably going to need to buy a meter of it at a time okay so you've got that then you need to go to lfs and get yourself some airline tubing and some airline valves so that's the items needed for the drip acclimation now the items needed to make the drip acclimation we can find most of the stuff in our home that's why we're going with the candle as the heat source to bend the acrylic if you have a heat gun brilliant use that it would be a little bit easier but i don't see the reason to go buy a heat gun just to make this if that's all you're going to use the heat gun for a candle will work just fine so we're going to go with the candle and the diy obviously a lighter to light the candle i've made this little jig it's a piece of plywood that i found in the yard um, three bottle caps nailed to it where I drew a square on it so it'll give me my angles and the bottle cap gives a nice curve so when you're bending the pipe you're not bending it too sharp a pair of scissors and a piece of 2.5 millimeter rip cord now rip cord is that cable that you get where it's normally okay, I've already pulled this one apart but it's normally a piece of cable where the cable is joined like so and you take the two ends and you rip it apart that's rip cord uh, 2.5 mil is best because remember it's a 3 mil id this is a very important piece of equipment this helps you keep the integrity of the inside diameter when bending the pipe preventing it from kinking okay so if you bend the pipe without this on the inside you're going to kink the pipe and you're going to either totally block the water flow or you're going to decrease the water flow because it's going to have a kink and only allow a little bit of water through. So now what I do with this, because it's not exactly 2.5 mils all the way through, I just take it and I give it a good pull to just stretch it out a little bit so that it does fit into the, 
the tubing a little bit better. Okay, so first of all, I've misplaced, oh sorry, yes, and a ruler, I forgot about that one. So, so I'm going to make two drips just to show you and I'm going to make them 30 centimeters which is uh, a foot or 12 inches yeah. okay and all you need to do to cut it is get your mark take a pair of scissors obviously you're not going to cut through it all we're going to do is hold the scissors there and turn the pipe that's going to score the edge of the acrylic tubing and then all you do is apply a little bit of pressure and diff breaks perfectly on that score very similar to the concept of cutting glass okay like I said I'm making two of these because I'm going to show you one for a rimless aquarium and one for aquarium with the euro brace Okay, score that nicely. Happy with that score. Apply a little bit of pressure and poof. Okay, we keep that one side. Okay, so first of all, we're going to do the Euro bracing one. Okay, so let's light our candle. Get that going nicely. If you've got a bit of a breeze coming in, just try and block it so that the flame stays straight as straight up as possible and remember to do this about 25 to 30 mils so inch inch or a bit more above the flame do not let the flame touch the acrylic as the acrylic will start blistering or get too close to the acrylic if the acrylic blisters it's not the end of the world it just doesn't look very nice so we're going to try and make this as neat as possible by keeping that just above the flame like so now what you want to do is while you're heating it is just to continue to turn or rotate the acrylic tube give it a bit of a flex every now and again see i've got a bit of a breeze coming through the window on the side here yeah just give it a flex just keep turning it remember remember to try and keep it as far away from the flame as possible because it just takes that little touch and then the blisters kick in obviously a little bit too much in there and then you've got you've got um, a burn okay you can see I'm getting some flex in the tube so I just try and do a little bit more there okay so I'm happy with that flex so what I do is put it on there and then oh sorry no not happy with that flex it's a bit cold this morning as well so the acrylic tube does seem to cool down a lot quicker yeah there's my flex coming back and don't get impatient and put it closer to the the flame just ride it out it will it will get there once it once it becomes pliable it, tend, it tends to 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 heat up a lot faster well become more flexible a lot faster I'm getting a little bit of that breeze coming through the side here. There we go. I'll take that onto the jig. Hold that for a few seconds. Okay, that should be good. Okay, so now with our little um, inner diameter protector, what we want to do is not to do more than one bend with that inside if you do see, see how hard that was well not hard but how it was biting inside that corner if you do a second bend you're probably not going to get it out without breaking the acrylic remember with bending this acrylic now that so, so we're going in there we're going to go up to the bend that's all we need to do okay with bending the acrylic here it is a little bit more brittle here when you do apply pressure on there so just need to be careful of that okay so this is going to be for a rimless aquarium we're going to go to the shape to the width of the bottle cap that's giving us 22 millimeters that's more than enough for a rimless it's, I mean if, if you're running in uh, one of the bigger red seas I think their rimless tanks are 19 millimeters so that'll be more than enough to get around 
to get around one of those. So once again, just staying off the flame and heating that section up. Careful, don't touch that flame. It's almost there. This flame is bouncing around like a mad thing. Starting to get the flex now. There we go. Put that on there. Bend that over. And there's our there is our rimless tank acclimation acrylic pipe. Okay. There we go. Pull that out. There we go. Now we're going to do the one for a Euro braced aquarium. Once again that so wire in heat up our acrylic now what I've done for this um, for this jig is the distance between these two bottle caps here is the the size plus uh, five mils of my euro brace so I will bend it according to that and then that will fit over my euro brace without any issues so once again, rotate it, keep giving it a good even um, dis distribution of temperature. So this one's going a bit faster. The flames are bouncing around like the first one so much. And I'm happy with that. So for now, we're just going to do it on there, just like so. Okay, there we go, pull out our protector, place it in the other side. Now, like I said, on this jig over here, these two, these two caps are my width of my, my Euro bracing. So I just want to do a little measure up, just do a little measure up. So I want to heat that area there. Okay, I often make a mistake and I uh, move it while I'm turning and then I lose that area and it doesn't quite bend in the right spot or it starts to stretch the acrylic if I, if I try and force it too much. So just bear in mind that you need to heat the area that needs to bend more. So you can move it from side to side to give it a, a wider spread of heat. That will also help. And then so, so when you bend it, it you know it bends on the spot. I've done I've done one before where you bend it and then it actually stretches the acrylic, and then getting your little spacer out of there is a bit of a nightmare. It's still usable because that space has done its job and kept the integrity of the inside of the the tube. Nothing wrong with it. It will still do what it needs to do. It's getting pliable. Just trying to move that a bit. Give me a wider angle. I think I have moved again, like I said. And just, yeah, just be careful not to touch the flame. That was very close. <laughs> oh, I, I lost it a bit there, hey? Yeah, I might need to edit that out. <laughs>
Okay, there we go. Right, see, I've been, I've moved it now off that mark. This one is really giving me a hard time. The nice thing about a heat gun is, yeah, the heat doesn't bounce around like a flame does. Just remember, if you do use a heat gun, don't go for the hotter setting. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, acrylic uh, becomes pliable at 80 degrees. So anything too much more than that, it will start to blister. So I'm getting pliability now. Let's throw it on the jig. There once again, there we go. Ah, okay. Oh. We finished with the heat source. Let's move that out the way. Okay, so there we go. So that one there will fit my, my um, Euro Braced Aquarium. Okay, so then what we need here is our valve and our airline tubing. What I've done here is I've put these on here just to stretch these a little bit, just to get them onto the acrylic a bit better. Um, you can use hot water, it does work if you're finding it hard to get over, but just leaving, on, leaving them on there for a little while just stretches out the acrylic a little bit. And then you've got a nice stretched out piece which fits over the acrylic tube, sorry not stretches the acrylic, stretches the airline tubing. So I like my valves at the top, so it's easier to control. So I'll just cut a little piece off there. I'll add my valve in. Remember now these valves aren't uh, in line, so to have that away from your, your glass, you don't want to do it that way, obviously. Otherwise, then it's going to be a mission. Put that on. Put that onto there. And there we go. That's your rimless one for a rimless aquarium. And then we're going to just assemble our Euro braced one. So, oh, yeah. So take that. Just cut that piece there off. Remember that's to go away from the glass. And then that will go into there like that. And that's it. A nice little neat acclimation station. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, so that's perfect. So every time you get a fish, you pull that out and you do your drip acclimation for your fish. Okay, guys, cool. So these are the two completed um drip acclimation stations so this is for a rimless that's for a euro braced aquarium see how that came out quite nicely i'm actually quite i'm quite impressed with that if i do so say my if i do say so myself um yeah so thank you very much for watching and we do really appreciate the support you've got so far it's been great and i uh, do enjoy making these videos it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of stress when videos don't record and you've done so much and then all of a sudden there's nothing to show for it and then you've got to do it again. Yes, this video was one of them. Uh, I actually filmed this three times and the third time I also had an issue. So that's why the ending now is what I've just done now, showing these. This is actually a few extra minutes that I've added on the end. Thankfully, it recorded enough so that I can just add in the ending. <laughs> yes, it was very stressful. But like I said, thank you guys very much. And um, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. It really does help us grow. And until next time, happy reefing.